Okay, so my paper was called What's the Word on the Street? And my intro was about like in middle school how kids will say something about a friend or like a middle school relationship will happen and everyone freaks out and it's like the coolest thing ever. And in middle school other people's opinion of you is like a really big deal so that makes things spread really fast because everyone cares what everyone thinks. And like the hottest news travels from kid to kid and it changes as it goes because everyone's talking about it and this is parallel to how rumor works in real life. It's just on a lot smaller scale. And my movie example was Gossip Girl, because they all like start this rumor and talk about each other, and then they create the bird book, and it's a really big deal, and everyone's talking about everyone. And then so my first point was that, formed properly, a rumor can be dubbed good, which makes it travel more successfully. And the first point was that if it has a really wide audience, it's going to spread a lot easier than if it only applies to a few people because rumors that touch on people's basic anxieties, such as death, disaster, conspiratorial plots, or racial tensions, apply to a really big audience. And so that makes it spread really fast because everyone can talk about it because it applies to everyone. And then it also justifies the way people spread the information because they feel like if it applies to themselves, they're like, okay to talk about it. And then if a rumor is adaptable, it's gonna spread really well. So a rumor must ride the tide of current swings and public opinion and interest in order to stay alive and it has to like mold and form to fit the different like views of society or different generations. And that's kind of like how with the grandma story, it survived over several diff different generations because it applied to so many different like countries and people and age groups. And then if a rumor is the appropriate link, it's gonna spread better because if it's really long, people are just gonna get caught up in all the details and they're gonna lose parts of it. So it's best kept like short and sweet and to the point. And then if a rumor has a credible source, it's going to spread good. And the source cited for a rumor is usually specific enough to sound plausible, but distant enough to be unverifiable, such as a cousin of a friend. And so typically, like, when you hear a new rumor, the first thing someone asks is, like, oh, who told you that? And that's, like, your brain's subconscious way of deciding if you're going to, like, believe it or if you're just going to let that one go. And then lastly, a rumor has to be able to draw interest. And then a good example of this in the book was the Paul McCartney story because it was really like puzzle themed and because they talked about how the song and if you played the song backwards, you could hear talking about the devil or whatever. And so that got a lot of people interested and they because they could like try it out themselves and they could try to figure it out. And so that kept interest really good. And then like a real life story of this was at work. Someone like started this rumor about how there was this myth that there was a treasure in Colorado and everyone got like super excited about it and they all like looked into it and they were trying to solve this map and figure out where the treasure was and then one guy just like jumped on a bus and left and he did not find the treasure so the rumor died after that but oh and then my example for this was the movie rumor has it and it grabbed interest really well because the story is that the girl is dating basically her stepdad because her mom also dated that guy and married and had her so it was just a weird plot which drew a lot of interest and then my next point was that rumors can serve as self-gain for an individual, and there's a lot of different ways that the self-gain can come, because it can either be from like positive self-gain or negative, or but with the first off, the positive self-gain was that like a new like twist on the way scientists were seeing things was that people are just using the rumors as a vehicle to get the truth instead of just to talk. Like they actually had a point to it. And then the next way it could be used for self-gain is in a negative way. And this was if information about those higher than us on the totem pole, especially information about their weaknesses, is of value. And this is like applicable in the workplace. So if like the lower level worker finds something out about the higher level worker, they spread it. And then people spread these rumors to shore up their social networks and boost their own importance with them. And rumors can build status for the person who will spread them. So they spread them to like boost themselves and they have a sense of power and authority because everyone wants to hear what they have to say. And then the last way it can be used for self-gain was if the intent is with like aggression or malice against someone else, rumor has the effect of dividing groups and destroying loyalties. Its essential motivation is aggression or hatred. And an example for this I used was like the Paris attacks and this goes back to the first one because people were just using it to find information a lot. And a lot of different stories went around, but most of it was for the intent of just finding out information. And my next point was that rumors are spread due to their quality of being driven by human emotion and needs. 
And the first biggest emotion for that was the wish, fear, or hostility. And those are all emotions that it relies on. And a lot of times it can just answer posed questions. So like people use that. And then the biggest emotion that rumors feed off of is fear. And because it increases people's sense of dread by suggesting that they themselves could be easily have been the victim. And this was pulled from the story with the lady that like they told first that she was killed as just like a random attack and then they changed it to she was killed as a plotted conspiracy. And once it was told as a conspiracy, it spread a lot faster because people were afraid that they could have been the target. And then back to this point, a lot of times rumors can just express the, and gratify the emotional needs of a community. So like in like a small town like this, if something big happens, everyone kind of talks about it and starts spreading it around. And then the line between the truth and the rumor kind of gets blended together. So then that makes it spread a lot faster because people just believe it. And then my example for this was the movie Contagion because that's like the movie where the disease is spreading to everyone and everyone's getting it and the community kind of like comes together like in that picture and they're just trying to figure out their plan and what they should do. And then my last point was that combated with the tactic of confrontation, rumor can be shut down and a public rebuttal takes a rumor and turns it into news. The news shows the rumor to be unsubstantiated. If you try to pass on the rumor after that, you run the risk of being ridiculed. And then the next point to back this was that the idea of not dignifying a rumor with a response reflects a deep misunderstanding of what rumors are. And then my example for this was the Procter & Gamble story because they like confronted the rumor that they were associated with the devil and they even went so far as to like press lawsuits. And in the lawsuits, they chose their battles wisely because there was a group of preachers that had been speaking out against them and they chose not to like push them to a lawsuit because they knew like publicly that wouldn't look good. So they just talked to the preachers themselves and they got them to come forward with a like public apology kind of and like the preachers stated the truth so then everyone like the rumor died after that because everyone knew that they had come forth saying they were wrong. And then my example that this went back to Gossip Girl because at the very end they put like everyone up on the table and they talk about like all the things that were said about them and then there's one that was a rumor and then the rest are true so then after that it, all of it just kind of goes away. And then lastly, what you can do with this moving forward is a filter. This is from sociology class, but a filter to go forward if you hear a rumor is to ask yourself if it's true, fair, and necessary. And if you can get through all three, then it's worth telling. But if it goes against one of those, it should stop. And used successfully, rumors can be a tool to spread information. And to stop them, if they're negative, so you should just confront them and expose the truth. And my last example is the movie Easy A because it's about a girl that is in high school and all these rumors get spread about her and she just kind of confronts them and they die. Where is it?